from static to alive. Rigging was never easier in Blender. If you know how, this tutorial will help you understand how rigging really works, so you can bring any model to life. Forget keyframing every single bone by hand, that's old school. I will show you how to use smart rigging tricks like inverse kinetics to make your animations move naturally with minimal effort. Let's jump into Blender and turn your static model into something that moves like a pro. By the way, this project is inspired by Wednesday's hand from the Netflix series. You can download the 3D model and all necessary files from my Patreon account. Link is in the caption. Alright, so let's delete first the light, the cube and the camera with the X key. Now we can import the 3D hand from my Patreon into Blender. After you downloaded the file, go under File, Import and select OBJ. Select the 3D model and import it. To rig objects, we need a perfect start position. And for this project, it's a flat hand. Change to Y in the axis cross. And as you can see, okay, we have to rotate the whole object. Take the rotation tool until it fits. And on this point, the first bone will appear. A good start position, we have to change also the whole location of the hand until it's centered in this area. That looks good. Select it, set origin to 3D cursor. And as you can see, we have a perfect start position now. And now we can start rigging, guys. So, to rig objects in Blender, you have to select first the object, go under Add and select Amateur. To see the bone, we have to change first some basic settings. Go under Data, Viewport and put a check mark under in front and axis. Change now the view and as you can see here's the first bone. We have to rotate it in our direction. To rig objects we have to change to the edit mode. Here are the three most important shortcuts for rigging. With the S key you can scale the bone. With E you can extrude it and create a new bone. And with Shift D you can duplicate it. All bones that we create now have to be perfectly centered in our 3D object. Don't panic, there's a simple hack. You have to go under this tag, change to snap base to center and snap target to volume. To apply this effect to our scene you have also pressed the snap button and all bones that we will create now in the future are all the time centered in our object. Alright, so let's start with rig. Select first the main bone, press S and rescale it. Select the bone, press Shift D to duplicate it five times for all fingers and use the rotation tool to rotate it. Make sure that the spheres are exactly on the bands of the finger to get a realistic result. Now we create the bones for each finger. Select the bone, press E, extrude it, press E, extrude it, press E, extrude it. The last sphere should extend beyond the fingertip, otherwise we will get strange deformations. Repeat it for all fingers. Perfect, that looks good. You may be wondering why some of the bones are extruded and some of them are duplicated. And it's really simple. When you extrude bones, the whole bones chain get affected. And at this point where we duplicate it, the connection break up. So we have separately affected fingers. In the end, we also duplicate this bone because we want to move the end upwards. Press Shift D, rotate it and scale it. Perfect. That are a lot of bones now. But don't panic. We don't animate everything separately. We will use inverse kinetics. It means that the end bone will affect the whole finger automatically. To achieve this effect, we have to create an additional bone for each finger. Select the last bone and create a small additional bone for each finger. Alright, as you can see, when we move the last bone, it affects only the last bone. To fix it, select all bones, 
Press Alt P and select Clear Parent. It affects no bones anymore. Now we have, of course, add the effect to our fingers. For that, change in the pose mode. Select the last bone, hold Shift, select the second bone and press Shift E to active bone. If we change now the position from the last bone, the whole finger gets affected. Perfect. Uh, direction is not necessary now. When we apply later on the whole bones to the object, it automatically apply the right direction. So let's repeat it for the other parts. All right, when you're ready, let's test if everything fits. That looks good. Perfect. We also want that this end bone only affect this four bones here. To do that, we have to go to bone constraint and under chain length, we can insert the count of our bones. So we select here four, here we select three, and here also four, four, and four. Do you find this tutorial helpful? Then please support me with a like, comment, or even a subscription. Let's change back to the edit mode and let's join everything together. Select first this finger bone, then the main bone, press Command P and select Keep Offset. And as you can see, now they are connected with each other. Repeat it also for this bone, Command P, Keep Offset, and also for the other bones. And don't forget the small one here on the back. When we go now to the pause mode, let's see if everything works. Now we can select this bone, put it up, and the hand works. Perfect, guys. In the end, we have to connect the bones with the 3D object. For that, we have to go back to the object mode and save now the file. If something go wrong, you have the end pose here and you are safe. Do you want this project file? Support my channel on Patreon. Link in caption. There you will get access to over 60 Blender projects. With your help, I can continue making videos. Thank you for your support, Art Invaders. Select the armature, enter 3D object, add, uh, press Command P and select with automatic weights. Now we can go to the pause mode and let's see if it works. And it works! Perfect! So let's animate now the whole hand. Select this bone and let's change to a good start position. Something like this. Make this window bigger and let's change the animation slider to around 30 frames. Insert under location a keyframe. Bring the animation slider to the beginning and let's bring the hand up. Insert again a keyframe and now if we hit play it looks like a jump. To make it more realistic, let's insert also a little bounce. So we can change again the position, bounce, and insert a keyframe again, bounce. That looks good. We also want that the end turns upwards. So we have to find a good position where it have to start. I think here at the bounce part, select the bone, Insert a keyframe under rotation, bring it to frame 30 and rotate it and insert again a keyframe. So let's see what we get. Jump, bounce, upwards. That looks good. Alright, what we can also do with the hand. We can move it to the side. Let's take again this bone. So let's change the animation slider to frame 80. Let's change the position to the side, to something realistic of course, <laughs> something like this maybe. Insert a keyframe, hit play, bounce, side, okay. Let's make it a little bit faster and let's take our end pose, this one. Let's change a little bit the animation slider to frame 31, create a new keyframe and now we can take Take this key new keyframe and bring it to frame 80. So if we hit play now, side and back to start position. Cool. Now we can also move it to the front. This is a little bit complicated, but not impossible. <laughs> so let's take again the 
main bone and let's change the animation slider uh, to frame 120 and let's move it in the front insert keyframe so now we have to remember frame 80 and frame 120 select here the last bone insert keyframe move it to 120 and move also the position insert keyframe go now back to 80 select this bone insert keyframe 120 also move it and repeat it for all fingers so all right if we had play now we have something like this <laughs> it not really looks realistic but it moves so what we have to do now we have all points select the end bone of this finger and bring it up insert a keyframe select this bone insert a keyframe and select this bone insert a keyframe and select this bone okay this one is always a little bit complicated and select this bone and insert keyframe so this finger is the most important one let's change his position to frame 90 this finger we leave at 100 this finger we change to 110 and this finger we change to 120 so the whole thing jump side move forwards okay all right and that's it for today's tutorial i wanted to keep the focus on rigging and animating however you get on my patreon the materials and the whole scene for free you can download it and we see us in the next week with a really really scary tutorial so stay tuned